Namaskar and welcome to Indian Diplomacy, a show on national television about India's role in the world, India's major partnerships, India's involvement in solving global problems, as well as India's critical challenges which deal with its external environment. Viewers, uh, in this episode, we are looking at a very unique phenomenon of military reforms, military integration, military jointness, and the quest for these outcomes and how they are linked to India's national security and its uh, relations with uh, both its adversaries as well as uh, its strategic partners. And to discuss this uh, special topic, I have a very uh, distinguished guest in the studio. Uh, let me introduce you to Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia. General Bhatia is uh, a very distinguished soldier uh, who served uh, the country uh, with great honor uh, for many decades. He was a uh, Director General of uh, Military Operations in the Indian Army and also former Director of the Center for Joint Warfare Studies. So, uh, General Bhatia, welcome so much to uh, Indian Diplomacy. Thank you very much. Honor to be on Indian Diplomacy. General Bhatia, when we talk of uh, military reforms and the imperative for it, uh, there is a, seems to be a global push for it. I mean, many major powers are moving uh, with uh, force restructuring, reorganization, adoption of technology. There are a lot of uh, changes happening in the military domain. Uh, especially in the last decade or so and it seems like uh, we are in the middle of some kind of a revolution that's happening uh, and uh, in that context uh, we have just announced the appointment of a new chief of defense staff uh, Lieutenant General Anil Chauhan. So your thoughts on uh, how uh, important reforms are and why reforms keep happening if you look back at history also uh, military organizations have frequently undergone uh, reformation and change as per the changing age and uh, changing times. So uh, why are military reforms so important uh, in the first place? No, uh, military reforms have to keep pace uh, with a growing nation. Uh, today India is a risen, responsible, resurgent nation. Uh, we are a regional power and we are a global leader. Mm -hmm. And military is a very important component of comprehensive national power. It's an essential element of national power. The world looks up to India today uh, for peace and prosperity, for making, you know, for imposing uh, the global, uh, the rule-based global order and many other things. You know, we're a very respected nation. Presently, I would say that we were a military force and we have to transform military force to military power. How do we do that? That is a, that is a major challenge. And that is where these reforms are very important, whether it is integration, theatrization, jointness, art uh, nirbharta and defense manufacturing, basically. Uh, you have to project your strategic autonomy, you have to project your military power, uh, whether it's uh, you know evacuating our students on Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So all this comes about together from uh, being a military power yeah. in addition to other things. Uh, this is what the world is all about. If you look at the USA or China, Russia for that matter, uh, they are military powers. Mm. Uh, we were a military force and now we are reforming to a military power. So transition from a force to a power, uh, says uh, General Vinod Bhatia. Uh, General Bhatia, reform and change uh, also are uh, relative, right? We always look at what our adversaries and also our partners are doing. So it's not a purely, in, you know, in-house exercise, we also study and uh, follow the trends. And this is, of course, how military strategy has always been formulated. So, uh, in fact, our late um, first CDS, General Bipin Rawat, uh, has often publicly said that we have been studying the major reorganizations happening within um, the US, um, in Russia, in China, in the UK, and other countries. And uh, we are trying to imbibe some best practices from them. And that aspect is critical, right? Because this is a dynamic situation. Uh, we observe what they are doing, and we try to keep up uh, with the changes or be ahead of the curve. Absolutely. Uh, uh, given India's security challenges, uh, we have to be present effective and future ready. So if you have to a future ready force, uh, you have to see what new age warfare is all about, mm. uh, what our adversaries are doing, what the world is doing. Like I said, we have to, we have to contribute to world peace. Uh, we have to contribute to Sagar, uh, which our Prime Minister has given to us. Security and uh, growth. Security and growth, all in the region. All in the region. Uh, you can't be in a standalone mode and say, okay, I've got two adversaries, so I'll only challenge them. No, it's not that. Uh, it is much more. Uh, we have defense diplomacy, and that is all the program is all about. Uh, we have to reach out on defense because defense is a very important part of diplomacy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very important part of power. So what, what we need to do is, and uh, we've got to be future ready, new age warfare today, geotechnologies is what drives the uh, military power. Mm -hmm. 
And new age warfare is all about imbibing these technologies, identifying, imbibing, inducting and exploiting these technologies. Uh, we can't be on a standalone mode and say, okay, I'll fight, uh, I'll be ready for, for my adversary only on the borders and not in other domains. Uh, the cyber domain, the space domain, the special operations domain are exceedingly important domains. Uh, AI is going to drive uh, a number of things, you know, uh, unattended uh, vehicles, unattended sensors, uh, I ISRS chain, uh, space has become important. So how do we get to be future ready? And mm. one thing we have to realize, we have a limited budget because of competing priorities at national level. It is mm. understandable. Every every armed forces has a limited budget. No one got an infinite budget. And how do we optimize that budget is a challenge and that is where I think the CDS becomes very important. Mm. He will have to not only look at jointness, integration, theatrization, but optimizing the defense expenditure while enhancing the combat effectiveness. Right. Because you ensure peace through being operationally ready. Right. No, we, we are not here to fight wars, we have to prevent wars, mm. be operationally ready. Mm. And that is where we ensure peace for the nation. We have to make sure that we are, you know, we, ha we have long term uh, economic development through peace and stability. For which we need a combat ready Correct. armed forces and also technologically savvy and adept and cutting edge armed forces. Uh, viewers, um, Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi ji has always led from the front when it comes to reforms uh, of the military higher organization and uh, he has taken historic steps, uh, created the position of Chief of Defense Staff which had been pending for many decades and uh, he has authorized uh, the key functionaries of the national security system to go for deeper transformation of the military so that as General Bhatia says it is uh, in step with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Let's hear from uh, Honorable Prime Minister himself about the need and the the thought behind the major military modernization and reforms that are undergoing. आने वाले समय में हमारी सेना को दुनिया का आधुनिक तम साजो सामान मिलने वाला है। लेकिन साथियों सेना के प्रभावी होने के लिए आधुनिकता के साथ ही एक और बात महत्वपूर्ण है। ये है जॉइंटनेस चाहे वर्दी किसी भी तरह की हो उसका रंग कोई भी हो कोई भी पहने लेकिन मकसद एक ही होता है मन एक ही होता है जैसे हमारे देश के झंडे में तीन अलग-अलग रंग हैं, लेकिन वो तीन रंग एक साथ होकर जो झंडा बनता है, जो जीने मरने की प्रेरणा देता है, उसी तरह हमारी सेना के तीनों अंगों को आधुनिक सामर्थ्यवान होने के साथ ही व्यवहार और व्यवस्था में आपस में जुड़ना ये समय की मांग है। He was uh, Prime Minister of India talking about the uh, essential need for uh, jointness, and this is of course the hub of the whole military reform process that is underway in India. Uh, General Bhatia. The phrase that uh, we left the audiences with is Samai ki maang hai. This is the need of the hour, this is what uh, Prime Minister is saying. So, please take us through the audience, through the whole process of reform that are happening in other parts of the world. Let us start with the big powers and how they have been doing it and clearly we are observing them and uh, we are also taking note of them. Of course, we will not copy their uh, reforms wholesale because there are differences in context, differences in strategic outlook. Uh, for example, the US has got a global uh, military footprint and uh, their theater commands and their uh, jointness has got a different approach compared to ours which is more focused on homeland defense and on uh, power projection only in the in, in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, we do not uh, intend to have military presence in far flung areas of the world. So there are differences but still um, PM was referring to the fact that uh, times are changing in the military domain and uh, so 
if you start with the US and uh, start and, and with other western countries they began this jointness the push for jointness way back even after world war 2 and have been doing it successively so uh, take our audiences through their efforts and what we can learn from them and yeah, that's a very interesting uh, question we've been studying this uh, for a long time there's 68 nations in the world which had a cds before we got one before we did yeah. sometimes they're Some, called chief of general staff yeah, chief of yes, defense staff yeah, the, chief of the, joint staff yeah the yeah. point is that they had someone who was heading the uh, armed forces it was a single, single single entity yeah, yeah. right so uh, after the group of ministers report after the cargill review committee uh, a cds force uh, to be appointed it took it took us a long time to do that but once it has done and now we have the second cds i think we are reaching there uh, mm. a little late though but very effectively and in our case uh, jointness has been i will not say it was not there earlier uh, there has been jointness we have uh, operations like 71 war which i think is the um, uh, biggest uh, you know largest one of the operations and jointly conducted then we had sri lanka we had maldives as part of the maldives operation myself but we didn't have formal structures for jointness mm. and then we didn't optimize that jointness so that is where i think prime minister's directions are categorical and clear and these directions have come to us from 2014 onwards mm. i uh, i jointness or integration or theatrization so this is what the prime minister has been giving the directions and this is what is to be implemented implemented now and we have started off with the uh, you know defense cyber agency we have headquarter ideas in impart uh, they have taken the ownership of jointness so things are moving in the right direction mm. though slow but if you look at the world mm. uh, the us uh, had the you know went into jointness after they started this in the mid 80s mm. and china started the jointness uh, after uh, in 2015 onwards uh, russia had a jointness they have uh, this thing the uk of course is, uh, uk is a small uh, armed forces uh, but major armed forces in the world are not only joined they integrated mm. and they look at everything from the top to bottom and bottom upwards mm. uh, whereas we had like the prime minister himself said uh, we had three colors but the three colors represent to the nation uh, army air force navy uh, security the very concept of security has changed over the years mm. you know we you know, once we talk of security we talk of comprehensive national security right it is not only security in the conventional domain uh, of safeguarding our territories whether it's the maritime ter territories borders or our land borders mm. uh, but security in a bigger way that is protecting and projecting a national interest mm. that is the key key of security so if you got to do that effectively Uh, and i'll say that effectively underland effectively mm. we need jointness mm. we need integration we need theatrization we need a single directive from top which the prime minister has given us and this needs to be implemented in the indian context right mm. indian context indian context right that's very important yeah jan rawat used to say yes. we study the models of the other powers but it has to be tailor made for our national security yes. needs indian yeah. context indian character mm. right we have got certain very uh, major assets mm. right a uh, leadership a uh, men very major assets which uh, which the other armies armed forces do not have so we got to optimize that and we got to have it in indian context our systems are different it has to be uh, we are we are under the democratic system we, we yeah. can't be you know like uh, pakistan or china or russia we are a different we are a democratic nation right you we know, have to serve some model reforms it doesn't happen by fiat from the top but yeah. here we have to consult yeah. and yeah so it has that's why it's a top down mm. top bottom and that the prime minister directions are there and now we got to work up bottom upwards mm. so that is where the integration and the jointness will take place it is not that's not taking place we have joint structures but that formal systems formal structures is what is being put into place now and that is what the cds is going to do yeah and general um, talking of other countries and how they view us i mean um the strategic partners major strategic like quad members and all of them have been uh, keen that uh, uh, india should go for you know more jointness because they have already done the integration most of them in their own respective militaries and um, i was reading david brewster a well known australian commentator who was saying that you know if india also has integrated all the tri services into under a single command then it's easier for us to do joint exercises with them because otherwise it's all disjointed although 
we are trying now to do tri service level exercises i mean indian army navy air force all together with our partner countries but it's still not under a single command so um, how much more beneficial uh, will it be for our um, foreign policy and our strategic partnerships if we are you know in within our own internally if we are reorganized in a, in a better way i think uh, uh, what you say is, a, is an imperative it has to be done and the direction on the top is it has to be done mm -hmm. uh, to get it right is very important and like i said it should not follow the uh, and you also said the same thing it should not follow the american model or the chinese model or any other model it has an indian model and that is what we are doing uh, that is how i think things are going to move in the right direction things are moving in the right direction and uh, we need integrated theater commands uh, we need uh, uh, to optimize our resources we need to optimize our combat effectiveness uh, and this should go a little beyond integration of the three services we mm -hmm. have to integrate other elements also you know a civil military fusion is required uh, r&d is required research and development is required we need uh, atmanirbharta and defense manufacturing which is very important mm -hmm. so all these structures have to come together and uh, we need to go ahead and read the other models study the other models and come out with the indian model and that is where uh, i am very sure it has been done already the studies have uh, have happened yeah. and uh, we await we we should take our time doing it we have taken our time doing it and once the implementation comes about there will be problems there will be uh, problem acceptability there will be problems of uh, this thing nothing comes no transformation happens without problems and uh, we have to have a road map and we have to have a transition management in place mm -hmm. that is very important without transition management because uh, we have uh, uh, we have to be present relevant also yeah so we have to transi transition management becomes very important we have the fortunately we have the political backing yeah and it is not only the cds more important is also equally important is the cds as the dma the department of military affairs so That's that is a very point. major reform it's a very very major reform because major. that gives them the authority otherwise accountability and authority have to be aligned mm. and the dma and the cds where the authority and accountability is aligned it, it is a major change mm. and this is now where i think india is uh, uh, on the take off stage from transforming from military force to a military power take off stage uh, says general uh, vinod bhatia he was um, one of the powers that has done this transition already and uh, few years ahead of india is china and china of course a major strategic uh, adversary of india and uh, poses many challenges to india's national security and uh, it's also a big competitor on the world stage for power and influence uh, i have um, an interesting um, analysis by a um, scholar from the Manohar Parikar Institute for Defense Studies and Analysis um, MS Pratibha uh, she is a specialist on China's force modernization let's listen to what she has to say about the reform that China has done and then resume this discussion in 2015 uh, the chinese leadership implemented uh, wide ranging reforms and restructuring to modernize its pla uh and there were many reforms but one of the most important ones is the implementation of the theater command uh now if you see before the reforms china had military regions uh and the military regions were mostly mobilization in peace time uh so the leadership felt that if there was in a situation of a potential conflict uh the military regions would be able to mobilize as fast as they wanted them to uh second uh, within the military regions there were many units which were operating independently in terms of training and they didn't have a uh, clarity and unity of purpose in terms of understanding their adversary and coming up with an operational plan which is much more integrated in fashion they didn't have the structure to facilitate such planning and third they were restricted in terms of the smooth uh, you know it, because there was no smooth communication of uh, decisions uh, through the organizational command uh, chain of command so the theater command sought to change all these issues the theater command has improved the joint operational command of the theater which means that they have now a much more situational awareness of the battlefield uh, during the course of the war uh, they are able to come up with an understanding of how the war is progressing because of that so overall if you see the theaterization has made china much more efficient in terms of uh, uh, conducting joint operations 
uh, and uh, you know have an understanding of the enemy's adversi uh, adversaries uh, capabilities and coming up with an uh, operational plan to counter it so dr ms pratibha um, of ids telling us about uh, china's transformation and uh, China's reforms, uh, and these are of course very recent. It's the last major power to undergo uh, shift to theater commands, and uh, the Western theater command, for example, uh, is assigned to uh, handle India. Uh, and we've had uh, major uh, uh, clashes as well as confrontations with them uh, at the LAC after they have done these transformations. Uh, General Bhatia, Chinese uh, obviously they loom large in our strategic consciousness and. Uh, Year by year, it is quite clear. In fact, uh, late uh, General Rawat, uh, CDS, used to say that it is the enemy number one and we can't shy away from the fact. And they have done these deep military reforms. And um, as our expert was saying, they have become more effective with information and with uh, uh, you know situational awareness and with also being able to counter the adversaries. They are now better organized. Now, this is one reason why I think uh, there is a great urgency uh, we should show greater urgency to move forward with our own changes. I think China has always been a threat. To say that China was not a threat is wrong. China has always been a major threat. We have always taken it as China as a major adversary. Uh, uh, to that, we should have no doubts about it. Mm. And uh, it's not only uh, that it has, you know, uh, it has manifested now in its uh, aggressiveness along the line of actual control. Uh, and one of the reasons could be because you know the the Chinese reforms took place from 2015 to 2020. Mm -hmm. It's 2020 that we see the you know aggressive behavior along the line of actual control. Uh, but I think it's a little too early. But in the Indian context, let me also assure uh, your audience uh, that we were fully prepared. It's not yes. that we were not, and we've done very well, exceedingly well. Uh, it is the first for the first time the. The PLA has vacated areas and gone back. Yeah, we pushed it's not, them, we pushed we pushed them pushed back. Them we, they, were, they were surprised by our strategic resolve. Mm. It's not that. But when it comes to integration, I think the one of the major things which China has done, and we, we should learn the lessons from there, is having a strategic force. Mm. Right? No, that, uh, nuclear weapons. Yeah, yeah, nuclear weapons, cyber, EW, uh, the, the strategic force. So it is okay to have a you know, Western theater command. Fine. Uh, we, we can handle that. And we all we also have integration. There's a there's a subtle difference between integration and jointness, mm -hmm. right? We should know the difference and work towards both. Mm -hmm. We have jointness in one place, and we are integration. When we are integration, it is we move as one machinery. Army, navy, air force. All no, there's no army, navy, air force. Yeah. It's it's one yeah. integration, yeah. one force. Yeah. You know, it's a package. Mm -hmm. It's all in one, right? Jointness will have certain structures which are you know still joint, as we say. Integration is more than jointness. So more advanced. More advanced than yeah. jointness. Right? And, and so and we have to go for integrated theater commands. Integrated theater commands is the future. Yeah. And uh, I would rather say integrated theaters, not even commands, because commands give us a misnomer. Yeah. We should have integrated theaters. Theater. Why should we follow the Chinese or the Americans have commands? We have integrated theaters, and theaters have their own responsibilities. They have their own area of responsibilities, their own way of preventing wars or mm. deterring wars. Deterring adversaries. And um, General, uh, when it comes to our friends um, and uh, partners also, we do a lot of joint exercises. We uh, are now wanting to, to show greater presence. There are these concepts of the ARC battle and all of these which are linked, which are which involved jointness and integration. So how um, prepared are we for these you know, emerging uh, areas, especially given the Indo-Pacific? That's the real theater in the long run where uh, we are, I think, the contest for uh, you know, whole position in Asia and in the world are going to be decided. And uh, on that front, uh, how ready are we and how much more further can we go in terms of our uh, unification of all our uh, wings, service wings, so that we are able to really uh, apply countervailing pressure on the adversary? And uh, how much uh, power can we actually uh, show them that, uh, that will uh, push them back? No, that, that's a uh, very interesting one. Firstly, we have to understand that we have got nearly 40 countries with which we have a strategic partnership. Yes. Right. And then we are part of all multilaterals. That means we have wanted. Indo-Pacific is only one of them. And Indo-Pacific is very important. Mm. Uh, we gain from each other uh, the best practices. Indian Armed Forces are one of the most battle-hardened combat-rich force in the world. Okay. We have been very effective. 
and at minimum cost. We have to understand that. Mm. So it is not only that we have to gain from there, they also have to gain from us. It is mutual. Mm. We are not in, we are not a, you know, we are equal partners in the right. Indo-Pacific. Right. Both strategically, operationally, in terms of resources also. So Indo-Pacific, we have to equal partners. We, we cannot say the others are, you know, better partners and we are lesser partners. No, sorry. Right. Indo-Pacific is our, our backyard. Yes. And you rightly said it. It is, it is the area which is going to be contested and we are prepared for that. And that is where I think, you know, let's take China for example. Uh, what do we want from China? We want to deter China's aggressive behavior, mm. period. Right? Containment or whatever you call it. How do we do it? I will term it as a 3D strategy. Defend the line of actual control. Yes. Because that without heaven. Dominate the oceans mm. because we are a peninsular nation. And deter China's aggressiveness by bind to balance with like-minded nations where we have congruence and convergence of interests. And that's where the court comes into play. Right. So it is not only one, it's not only court. We have to do all these things together and that's exactly what we are doing. It's not that we, you know, look at the Navy which is going. We have just commissioned a uh, IAC aircraft for carrier. aircraft carrier, yes. our own. Uh, we have, uh, you know, redeployed uh, carried out some rebalancing uh, along the line of actual control. Uh, we have gone to multilateral this thing. We are wanted by the world. Look at even SEO. Absolutely. Absolutely. So India is wanted by the world and there is this 3Ds uh, strategy says General uh, you know, Bhatia for India to handle the uh, Chinese expansionism. Uh, military reforms are going to be very critical. Military uh, integration, jointness, all these things are very, very crucial as we face up to this uh, dragon, not just on the northern borders, but all along our southern littoral in the Indian Ocean and in the Pacific. So um, that's all we have time for on this episode, uh, viewers. Uh, but I want to thank uh, General Bhatia for sharing his uh, deep insights. Uh, thank you, General. Thank for, you very much. Thank you for being with us. Yeah. And uh, really, um, the uh, sum of this discussion is that uh, the world is moving in a certain direction. International relations depend a lot on whether we are alert to the changes um, uh, that, that are happening all around us. And India is alert. Uh, and India is observing and taking close note of uh, military reorganization in other parts of the world. And we are trying to keep up with those changes. And we are trying to also reform our processes to uh, integrate, as the Prime Minister said, the three colors, like the three colors of the Indian flag, the three service wings are coming closer and uh, we are aiming for uh, theater commands and for uh, closer integration so that uh, we really pack a punch when it comes to our adversaries. And of course, as General Bhatia said, uh, India is also most uh, desirable partner, strategic partner for so many, especially democracies around the world. And that also, our desirability will rise if we are seen to be more efficient, more more combat ready and more uh, organized in terms of uh, jointness. So thank you viewers. Keep thinking about military strategy and how it impacts our foreign relations. Uh, this is These are not two separate things. They are actually uh, interconnected domains. Uh, I'll see you again next time. Until then, take care.